before the snow has even melted, we've completely finished our lambing for the year. That's right. Six healthy lambs. They're beautiful. Three and, healthy ewes. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone's ready to get out of their winter quarters, but it's kind of good for them to be contained and safe for a little while longer. So Stu, people have been asking about your rat issue. Got a dozen of them or so. Yeah. I say that's pretty good. Yeah, that trap's doing awesome. We've had a few very gentle nudges that it's gonna be spring at some point in the future. I got some seeds in the mail. Come with me. Well, I guess it's time to put them in the dirt then. <laughs> Look at all that dirt. <laughs> <laughs> at least there's some in the greenhouse, if we can get in. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find a way. I thought today I could plant, my pepper seeds were old, so they didn't germinate. So I got some fresh ones okay. that I thought we could plant. And since we're about eight weeks out from the last frost, which is ridiculous to even think that in eight weeks it could not be frosty anymore. <laughs> um, well, we're gonna months. We're gonna start tomatoes because- What can happen then? We should be about eight weeks out for tomatoes and eight weeks out for cabbages too. Okay. So you wanna help me fill up some of these trays with soil? Let's do it. We could do them on the ground. I don't know if that'd be easy. Yep, that's good. Soil's like frozen. <laughs> we got a pretty day today. Oh my gosh, it's so nice, except it's not warm at all but it is sunny, so yeah. that's something. Yeah, that's the thing with clear days, is that they usually come with- They're freezing very, cold. Very cold, cold, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cold weather. It's so true. It's so clear. I'm not gonna grow 100 tomato plants this year. No, we learned our lesson last year. Finally, I mean, it only took five years. Well, maybe I'll just plant a few extra. We'll see. How are we gonna do the tomatoes this year, do you think? I'd like to put a tea post or a wooden post at each plant and just do a dozen plants or so. If we had like a like a wooden post, you know? Right. And then planted the plant right next to it. Uh huh. And then we can just stake it up. Yeah. The post. Right. That's what I'd like to do. Because putting the weed tarp down, like I didn't have to weed the tomatoes once last year. Yeah, that was But nice. the staking was a serious problem. Yeah. Now I was thinking that we could use cattle panels and just run a cattle panel mm. the length of the row, and then we'd have a night, because they make the big, tall cattle panels. Yeah. You can get, and then you have, you don't have to worry about wire or trying to- That's true. Or cages or anything like that. And I've heard of some folks uh, having some success with that. Yeah, that's true. So. Something of that nature. Yeah, something like that. Something of the trellising nature is what we what need you, to do. What usually happens is we end up with uh, a tomato hedge. Yeah, it's true. Because yeah. we haven't taken the time to really trellis it. I know, it's true. Have, so. Now let's do tomatoes. Okay. And we'll do some more peppers. Tell you what, there is nothing as sexy as a new Sharpie. <laughs> That's the truth. Doesn't take much for you, huh? Nope. Give me a Sharpie. That's how you ended up with me. <laughs> yep, that's all I need. Doesn't take much. So how many tomatoes should we plant? I mean, I have to do more than a dozen. Well, we've got about a 75 foot row. And you wanna do them. Um, Cause you have to grab different types for different stuff. Three feet apart, right? At least. Three Italian heirloom. Yeah. Like that. So 75 divided by three. Can you do that math real quick? Nope. Quick. Do it. Nope. Do it. See, three goes into seven. Two times. Two times three is six. Minus one is, or minus seven is one. Bring down your five. Three goes into 15. Five times. Okay. So what is that? I'm 25. Sorry. 25? 25 plants. I think that sounds about right. Okay. But I use them for different things. So like I do some for like, you know, fresh eating, some for sauces, yeah. some for salads, some, you know, so it's, that's what's tricky. 
But here's the thing about starts though too, is they don't all turn out. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't, so I'm gonna err on planting the side, the side of planting a little extra. Yeah. Because that would be better than not having them. Look how teeny tiny these little seeds are. Sun gold. Okay, Ukrainian purple. These are a good one. I love these tomatoes. Oh, because these are old, I'm gonna put like three okay. in each one and hope that we get- You always thin them out. Yeah. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five of Ukrainian purple. Okay. Now we'll do Ah See this is hard because they're rows of six. Oh well, you can throw an extra one in there if you need. Okay. I'll do some Oh you know what I'll do? I'll do a an extra sun gold, because I really do want those. You know those cherry tomatoes that we preserved this year? Mm -hmm. They were just so enjoyable to have this winter. That's true. And so... You're talking about the ones we packed in the oil? Yeah, so yeah. I'm airing on the side of a little bit more for the... Yeah, it's fine. Those were really good throughout the winter. The wear. cherry tomatoes. Yeah. Because I've been getting my tomatoes from Jovial. The canned tomatoes, and I tell you, they're just better than what I could do myself. They are pretty good. They do such a good job with them, and but I do want, you know, some for salsa and all that. Okay, here we go, Italian. This is good, because we'll know if these are gonna germinate within a few days, really, a week. So if they don't, we'll still have time to plant something else. But I wanted to try to make use of the seeds that we had mm -hmm. and not totally go berserk buying new ones. Yeah. Which I know is not like me, but. <laughs> you know, the other thing we could do is to do two rows of tomatoes this year. Cause there was a few things we grew in rows last year that we didn't need to. It's true. But the question is, do we need that many tomatoes? <laughs> really? Yeah, that's true. That's true, because I did get them a lot. Yeah. Like to the chickens, I would just pick them and, yeah. you know. And perhaps that space would be better used elsewhere. That's true. Or for something else. Or even a few things I want to grow more of, like potatoes. Mm, exactly, yeah. You know. Okay, how's that look? Does that look about like the right amount? Sure. Why not? I still have a bunch of tomato seeds though. I was trying to use these up. Well, maybe we can pay it forward. For <clears throat> okay, since it's really easy to tell the difference between tomato seeds and pepper seeds, how about I just fill this other okay. part with peppers? We'll probably want more, um, more than this. Let's see, one, two, three, seven by six. Hmm. Might be pretty close. We'll see how many seeds we have. We might not even have enough. Those are sweet peppers. And now we've got some hot peppers. Ooh, yummy. Spicy. We didn't do chilies this year, last year, and I missed having them. Yeah. Especially for salsa. We will need to put these inside where it's nice and warm. Oh, you hear that? Yep, somebody's calling for us. Ma! Doesn't take long. I'm hiding. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, there's no use in using a cell tray. I just broadcast them in here and then, you know, piece them apart. And it's funny because I was actually watching a video, trying to get a clip out of a video we did last year. Yeah. And I talk about how I wanted to grow so many onions that we could just eat as many as we wanted all the year. Mm -hmm. And I would say we've done that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have a cellar full still. Yeah. We just. Eat sauteed some. up some last night for dinner. Yeah. Now we will do, um, thinking cabbages. Okay. Okay. The kids are crying. 
which means that our, t our time here is up. So you got those topped off with soil. Yep. I think we'll wait on moving the lettuces out here until next week because it's supposed okay. to get a little bit warmer. Yeah. And better safe than sorry. That's true. So let's take these inside, get them in a warm spot and water them. Okay. And then... Meh. <laughs> we'll see what's next. We'll see what's next. All right. Okay. Uh, can't stay outside forever as much as I'd like to. Little people keep beckoning me in, so... Thought maybe we could head in and finish some work for the cooking community. Make a little treat. Ooh, panna cotta. Yeah, that's on the list this, this month. Okay, well that's worth going inside for. <laughs> I think so. Any sort of sweet cream, in my opinion, is worth a lot of work. I uh, will always concur with that. <laughs> These are gonna be small little panna cottas. Cool. I did this one with honey instead of syrup. Woo! Syrup. Honey instead of maple syrup? Yeah, it's good. Yeah? Florally. From what? From the honey? From the honey, it's wildflower honey. This is probably not allowed in kitchens. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, this is how you can tell it's a oh, this is man. a home kitchen, not a commercial kitchen. That's right. <laughs> this is not how Chef Ramsay cleans up his dishes. No, but he also doesn't feed his children. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he does, but <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna set these outside in the snow and then let them cool down. Let them cool down. And then once they set we, we could put them down in the But the snow is just right there. I know. <laughs> Actually, um, would you mind going downstairs and getting the saran wrap? It's on the top shelf. Okay. And I'll put little plastic things over this okay. while they they should set actually pretty fast because they're so small. Then we can do the strawberries and photograph them for the cooking community. Sometimes it can be a little tricky with the cooking community because you're cooking the recipes a month in advance. Right. Right, so what's gonna be in season in April? Uh -huh. Well, strawberries for a lot of people, but we don't have strawberries yet. We won't have them for a little bit. Right. Right, yeah. I guess you could always just use strawberry jam. Yes. But I think, I think it would be really good too. I mean, any kind of berries or compote yeah. really would be good on this recipe. They just don't have the right texture. I mean, it yeah. was just like, yeah. I don't know, just not my thing. Yeah. I think this will be a lot prettier. Yeah. I kind of like this part of the cooking community because we get to try things different ways. Like this tastes different with honey than it does with syrup. And right. it will taste different with fresh strawberries than it would with frozen strawberries. And it kind of keeps it fun. Okay. We're just gonna let these guys cool, yeah. Okay. And I'll be ready uh, probably after lunch. Okay. We'll take a little bit. What a guy. Thanks, honey. What I need to do now is just cut these sort of sad excuses for strawberries. <laughs> it's the best that we could do in I know, there's just February. nothing like fresh strawberries. I mean, yeah. so like these small little pieces. And then I'm gonna shoot it for the recipe card kind of above it. Right, lots of natural light coming in through the window. Yeah. It's good. Okay. I wanna leave some bare. Mm-hmm to kind of show the panna cotta. Right. And I took your idea of ah, chocolate, chocolate nibs. but I didn't have any cocoa nibs. So yeah. I just cut up this dark chocolate. Yeah. yeah so what I'll do is I'll just. There. I hope you give me uh, You'll get credit. credit and, the... Yeah. All right. I think this will be a really fun recipe for people to make.
As always, the trick with the recipe is getting the right ratio, right? Yeah. Ratio of strawberry to chocolate to uh -huh. panna cotta. See how agile I am? <laughs> but look how pretty it is. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, baby. Okay. Should we taste test again? <laughs> I know. Taste some. <laughs> 